Hi there, everyone. This is the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage, and I am making a video for a machine that I have made videos before on, and it's one of my favorites from the period. This is a late 1960s, uh, mid to late 1960s, Kenmore zigzag machine. It's called the 158.1750. That's the actual model number. And uh, this machine is one of a number of great Kenmores. There are a lot of them from uh, that were made in Japan as well as in the United States. This machine is one of my favorites, and it's in sort of a pistachio and um, sort of a cream color, two-tone. And this machine was one of the best, I think, one of the best attempts the Japanese made at copying both the American Singer brand for its bobbin type, as well as the Italian zigzag mechanism that Neki had perfected in Italy. And there are a lot of great Japanese machines. I have restored many brands. Kenmore's are one of my favorite, not the only one. And they've, they've got a few things about them that um, stand out. Many of the Kenmore's have um, larger motors. Some of the Japanese machines would have everything from three quarters of an amp motor up to about one. And uh, the Kenmore's had 1.2. That doesn't sound like much of a difference, but it's a whole, another, a whole quarter or 25% to 35% more than many of the others. Uh, and this particular machine, you'll notice like a little door in the top here. It has a little hatch and you can put cams in. I, and I have a set of cams that will come with this machine um, that you can do decorative stitches with. They work beautifully. <clears throat> but for most of you, the main reason you would purchase this machine is for both its straight lock stitch and as well as zigzag, and it has both capabilities. And so for those of you who are sewing everything from lightweight garments to heavy material and even garment leather, which I'm going to sew a little bit for you guys today. Um, but I wanted you to see this machine because, again, it's one of my favorites. It's one of the most quiet and one of the most solid um, Kenmore's that I've come across. You have feed dog drop here on the front, if you wish. The power button is right here. In fact, when you put the, turn the power on for the machine, you get the light bulb comes on. And you have reverse and then st uh, stitch length control on this little lever. And then you have bobbin winder on the top. And then you have stitch width for your zigzag. And uh, I'm going to start with straight stitch right now. And uh, that's literally all there is to the controls of this machine. They're incredibly simple. This machine comes with <clears throat> a number of attachments that I'll be including. You'll see those listed in the Craigslist post. And it also comes with a nice um, Kenmore box that includes um, various uh, feet and attachments along with a full set of cams. And uh, the cams are a lot of fun. If you like decorative stitches, you may not make any of those stitches, but they're nice to have. And, uh, and it also has a carrying case that says Sears Kenmore on it. So uh, you can, if you want, if you prefer to sew on a table, this machine will go in any of the vintage Kenmore tables. Uh, also the white brand tables as well. And it's easy to figure out the, um, the dimensions for the bed, and I can help you with that. And uh, then the tables are fairly easy to spot. So, But for the moment, the machine will come with the carrying case. And let's see. Um, I'm going to start. I'm going to sew a few different things for you guys today. I've got some sort of medium weight. I guess you'd call this maybe a slip cover fabric or upholstery fabric. And I'm going to do one, two, three, four. I'm going to go ahead and do four layers of that. I just bumped the camera there, sorry. <clears throat> I'm just slowing it down so you can see the needle moving and I'll do some back tacking for you. Now I'm going to come up and I'm going to uh, shorten my stitch length a bit so you guys can see it does different lengths. Many of you never use the short stitches, but it's nice to have if you want to sew. If you're going to sew um, uh, knits, <clears throat> uh, some of you will use it for that purpose. I'm currently sewing with a size 16 organ brand titanium needle, one of my favorite needles. Do a little back tack on the short length stitch as well. Oh, before I pull that up, I want to come back. I've got a little bit more to do for you. I'm going to come back over. 
and I'm going to show off some of the uh, machine zigzagging. And this is one of the, you guys have to remember in the 1960s, well actually in the 50s and 60s, <clears throat> when home sewing machines started to bring in zigzagging, which had existed in industrials but not in machines for the home, the reason it was such a big deal is you have to remember there were no home sergers back then. So, for example, this fabric sample was surged. This is a remnant that I'm doing. Well, you know, before home surging, if you were going to, you know, cover your edges, you really needed zigzag. Many of you today, the reason you might want a zigzag uh, capable sewing machine instead of a serger is if you're going to be sewing on, um, you're going to be doing handles for heavy, um, uh, heavy duty bags or maybe a handbag, maybe you're doing knapsacks or backpacks or even tent work. When you're sewing camping tents, things like that, you want to reinforce your corners. That's when you might do it. So we're going to go back to long stitch and then I'm going to come over as simple as turning that dial and now I'm going to <coughs> show off a zigzag stitch and and slow my speed down a little bit so you guys can see a little better. It's kind of hard to see what I'm doing when I'm zooming by here. So four layers of a pretty darn heavy fabric and it, it went right by it like it was nothing. So um, let me take this out. Let you guys see the stitches. And as you can see, they are amazing. And you'll see both, let's see, you've got long length let me make sure she focuses here. I've got sort of light, it's sort of the end of the day here, guys, and I'm sort of in a dusk light. So you'll see both long as well as very short, short length stitches, but gorgeous tension, a really nice zigzag. Um, now, uh, before I move on to, um, I'm going to do some webbing, some very thick webbing, and then some garment leather. But I wanted to show you guys a feature of these machines that's really nice. You know, if you want to look for a moment, let me turn the light out, it'll be a little easier for you to see. If you look at the presser foot here, I've just put it down. When you pull it up, you get a little more than a quarter of an inch, which is pretty typical for vintage machines. But if I put my hand on the presser foot lift, I can come up and get about seven eighths of an inch. That's almost an inch clearance, which is just amazing. Kenmore's are the only machines from the vintage period that I know that do this, and I believe it's because um, Sears could go to the manufacturer and say, we're Sears, we're incredible, and we buy lots of machines, we want special features. And back then, Sears had a lot of power. It was a very reputable retailer back in those days, and they could do that. And that's a great thing. Now, you're never going to sew through this much material, guys, but it's nice to have that clearance when you have something bulky you want to kind of get in there, and you don't want to fight with the clearance of the machine, such as this. I want you guys to see one to that's three layers of a very thick webbing and I'm going to if you notice here it's you know it's wanting to to bump up against the normal clearance so I'm going to come right under it and just do this and we're going to do we'll see if the zigzag this is a very textured webbing guys so I want to make sure that it's going to show up for us and I'm going to start with my needle down which you should always do oh turn my machine on that would help um, let's see. Okay, guys, I wanted you to see that I just did zigzag through literally one, two, three layers of webbing, and that's pretty strong stuff. Um, anything beyond that, you really don't want to, um, to, to you know, push, you know, like I said, you're not gonna push three quarters of an inch of stuff through the machine, but something like this is, is fun to, uh, to be able to do. <coughs> Excuse me, some of you like to do handbags and you've got like handles and things where you've got, um, you've got quite a lot going on there, you know, multiple layers. Uh, this is also good for those of you who might want to reinforce corners if you're doing things like boat enclosures and you're sewing with some umbrella. Maybe you're going to make some outdoor seat cushions for your patio furniture or something. Uh, these are just examples of things you might do. Now, many of you like to sew leather sometimes, and you can. Um, and this is the kind of leather you sew. You guys have seen me do this in my other videos. This is garment weight leather, right? I say, how do I know if it's garment weight? Because I can wiggle it. It's like, it's like wiggling a... A big, um, you know, linguine noodle, fettuccine. Um, so I'm going to take one, 
and then two, make sure I'm putting this one on the camera, one, two, and then three. So I'll take three layers of garment leather and I'm going to come back to straight stitch. Now, for sewing leather, as you guys have heard me say often, you want a leather tip needle. And I, I'm switching between materials here, guys. So bear with me. I'm just going to come down. I've got my, you know, my needle in the material. And I'm sewing at a medium pace, right? And even back tack if I want in leather. So as you can see, the machine, a vintage machine with this kind of power, does not mind sewing leather for you. And again, if I were doing this, if I were doing this, guys, on a regular basis, or if any of any other than testing a machine like I'm doing now to make sure that it, it can handle something, I like to use the right needle. So if I'm doing really heavy weight fabrics, I want a jeans needle. You know, that's why you see me using size 16 all the time on these machines. 14s to 16s. Um, and then now I want you to see these pretty darn amazing stitches. And that's three layers of garment leather, okay? I was going at a medium pace. And, you know, the machine did it with a universal fabric needle. But ideally, you know, if you're going to sew leather, uh, use leather tip needles. It just makes the machine's job easier. And this one, a lot of times you can't see the other side because of the suede and the texture. But this actually, I think this is going to pick up pretty well. You can see those really nice stitches. So guys, this is one of the great sewing machines from the 60s. Uh, it is all steel, it is all metal. It has been fully restored and gone through as I do with all my machines. Uh, if you would like to set up a time to see it or come and try it out or have me try it out or demonstrate it for you, uh, just contact me through the Craigslist posting. And if you go through my videos, there's a video link on the Craigslist post, obviously. Um, and if you've, if you've found my videos, and if you look at a search on my, my, my YouTube channel, you're going to see that I've made, I've restored quite a few of this particular model. Sometimes it'll be the 1750 or the 1752, and they look very similar. They have very similar features. And uh, I've done that for a reason, because they are, I have certain models you'll see me restore and sell over and over again, because I really like them. And this is one of those, those great Kenmore. So, uh, and, uh, oh, this machine also comes with a buttonholer attachment, uh, which is also included along with the cam. So, anyway, if you would like to bring your own fabrics to try it out and check it out for yourself, please do. Just contact me through the Craigslist post. And if you have any comments or questions, just put them there on YouTube. Thank you.